Hey folks, Masako X here. This was our 2020 April Fool What If series. And if you remember what was going on back then, this story probably came at the right time for you almost likely. The Ginyu Force. Probably one of the more memorable and exciting aspects of the Nemec saga. Save for that ugh, obscure Super Saiyan thing, I'm sure you probably don't remember it all that much anyway. This team managed to charm its way into our hearts, despite being opt by the Dragon Team, and then their leader was swiftly removed from this coil. But what if it didn't have to be that way? Or at least the first part. If the Ginyu Force got a second chance, thanks to Goku's unique way of recruiting new redeemable souls, they could live on Earth with our heroes and become heroes themselves and stars in their own right. Except, of course, when they choose not to be, like their aforementioned captain. Oh boy. Things went south real fast, didn't they? In the last part, the new force led by Jace, I guess we could call it the Jace Brigade, were in the doldrums and had no clue as to what to do next. They were on Yardrat, trying to find ways to improve their skills, but no real concrete direction in which to walk down going forward was available. But then Jace remembered something. His homeworld, Brench. Yes, it does exist in the official law, folks. Perhaps there might be some clues there, since the Freezer Empire had been disbanded. Sure enough, Jace's home had been freed, and was in the process of renovating itself into a world post-cooler. Or as many of you said in the comments last time out, the Loch Ness Cooler. Love you folks. But Bonnie was our main focus here, and she was very much glad to see the back of the old ways of the Ginyu Force, and now a much more noble, valiant, and heroic band of fighters. She was very much against Frieza's approach to things with the Ginyu Force, and chose to do things her way, all by cleverly framing herself as working on Brench to recruit newcomers to potential forces amongst the Empire, but in her own style. However, despite this welcome addition and reunion, the new Frieza Force had resurfaced, calling for those who were once loyal to return. Sorbe had gotten his mitts on the prize, and Ginyu? Well, uh, he's back. With Frieza. Full circle, I would say. But is this Jace's final chance to get the kitten back? Let's resume. As we had touched upon, we had seen our squad getting a little bit of a vacation on Brench, Jace's home planet, to clear their minds after Ginyu's betrayal. Before Sorbe came along to get some new minions to help fight the new Frieza's cause, they had spent quite a lot of time helping out at Bonyu's training school, as their old friend was always a bit of an inspiration for them, and now she was with them for greater things too, and on their side for good. They were also unaware of the happenstance of Earth or in the greater galaxy. Since their self-imposed exile, the Jace Brigade had not really been in touch with Earth, really, deeming themselves unworthy of their attention and audience. But then some shocking news came about, much later for our brave squad, as the one who they had ridiculed had indeed succeeded in something that none of the ex Freezer Force members had even tried to accomplish. They had managed to resurrect the tyrant, Sorbet's lot, or so he claimed. Berta was stunned. That's a pretty bold claim there, fellas. You had better be right about this, or else I can't imagine the folks of this universe would be very much welcome to his ramblings. Raccoon scratched his chin. Raccoon reckons it to be true. Sorbe is known for many things, but this level of buffoonery is certainly abnormal for Raccoon. Believing that this return might also have something to do with the only resurrection tool that the squad knew about that could actually do it, they took Bonyu and used their instant transmission to return to Earth, able to easily beat Freezer and Sorbe to the punch when it came to speed and travel on that front. They had something going for them. Surprisingly, when they found themselves back on the blue dot, they couldn't sense Goku or Vegeta's energy anywhere. That was weird. Goldo was staring around the forest of Palzu and couldn't fathom why Goku wasn't here, and yet everything looked fine. So they clearly weren't dead. So they decided to teleport to the next best thing, which was in this case for them, Gohan. The chap that they had trained with in Videl back in the day to help improve their great Saiyan and dancing skills. Gohan did indeed welcome the troop, and were happy to see them, but still surprised though nonetheless. And honestly, 
Jace was a little surprised to see Gohan looking a bit out of shape. But he chose to be courteous and respectful towards Gohan, since he was the best thing that they could rely on right now in terms of help. Small talk away! So, um, uh, you got a nice place here, Gohan. Raccoon thinks the science life hasn't been kind toward your physique. Berta snapped and lambasted Raccoon for being so forward, and the large one rephrased his statement. <coughs> well, regardless, Raccoon is supportive with your life choices, Gohan, and that I hope that you realize yourself in your private and professional life. Gohan was a little confused with this, but took it all the same. Seemed mostly nice what he said. Thanks, Raccoon. But what are you guys doing here? It's been so long since we saw you after Ginyu went insane. Wait, did you get the same urgent message from Bulma? Apparently, Jaco has some dire news. Jace clocked on that that might indeed be the same message that Bonyu had heard out in space. Well, if the patroller has dire news, then we might be after the same thing. Let's bring each other up to speed, mate. Jace nodded. Oh, by the way, Gohan, this is Bonyu. Our former squad member and a good friend. Bonyu walked forward and gave Gohan a very firm handshake to which the man was quite taken aback by. Oh, this boy is delightful! I now know why you like him so much, Goldo. Very forthright and respectful. Yeah, he's a real smart cookie! Goldo jumped into the air and patted Gohan on the shoulder. I think she likes you, he said with gusto. Good to know, said Gohan with a slight twinge of apprehension whilst Bonyu was beaming with pride. But Goldo then felt absolutely terrible for being a wingman when he found out that Gohan had married Videl in the time they had been away. Gohan told the brigade what he knew, as well as the whole Super Saiyan God business, as well as the reason why his father and Vegeta were not here. They were supposedly training with gods. That was a shocker to Bonyu, who was all new to this, but the Chase Brigade weren't surprised at all. Bonyu looked to Jace and asked, is, is this level of unexpectedness common in your line of work, Jace? Yep, yeah, it's never a dull moment with Master Goku around. Bonyu was a little bit nervous hearing this, but she was starting to get used to this level of intrigue and, dare she say it, mild fun. Also, after all this is done, you've got to meet Pan. Pan? said Bonyu with puzzlement. And my daughter. Wait, you had a kid sport? <laughs> I guess we weren't fast enough for that news, Jace. We missed a lot. Oh, blast! We should have gotten a present for the little one. Oh, I feel like such a heel. Raccoon wondered whether they actually had time to fly to the store to maybe get a present for Pan before Freezer showed up, but Gohan just waved it aside and said it was a gift enough for them to be back. Still, though, even with this pleasant banter that was being had between them, a grave danger would soon appear. Indeed, a huge ex-Freezer Force army were headed for Earth, and they were there for blood. This wasn't going to be your Trunk Saga level of chicanery, nothing like the Thousand Soldier battle in the original movie. Freezer and Sorbet were here to make the most of their newfound power and gains, and truly wipe this planet clean, or simply blow it up, whichever came first. So long as there were pain and discord here, that was what mattered most. All the Z-Fighters were glad to have the Jace Brigade on their side once more, while their ex-colleagues were looking at them with disdain. That was quite the shocker for the old guard, I will say. To see Freezer's former elite squadron being turncoats and siding with Goku's band of merry men? Well, this is going to make the news feeds, I can assure you, if they survived. But to be fair, a lot of those that fought for Freezer weren't as fervent as they were back in the day. The vast majority of them were just simple mercs that were added to the force to make up the numbers after the squad had left the force. And he was there. Freezer was there. The brigade, including Bonyu, were bracing themselves for a tirade from the Emperor, expecting expletives up the wazoo. Some kind of speech and rant about them betraying him, perhaps? How he trusted them for so long and now they've thrown all that good favour away? But no, at least not yet. From what they could tell, he was calm. But then a thought dawned on Jace. He could win this. So he was calm now too, since Jace was pretty sure he could have taken him down if Freezer was still just as strong as he was back on Nemec and Jace had progressed. But shortly after that thought had crossed his mind, that flicker of hope, he noticed something worrying. 
Not only were the general strength of all the mercs and soldiers under Frieza's control higher than back on Nemec, but Frieza had also new right and left hand men on his side. Gone were the days of Zarban and Dodoria. They hadn't received the same resurrection treatment clearly. One of them they recognised as Tagama, who they recalled being a rather rambunctious and ambitious upstart, with the other one being the one that they had hoped wouldn't be by Frieza's side, but they weren't surprised really. Look who had the gall to show up here. It was Ginyu, who was also looking rather sternly back at the Earth contingent, but not looking at his former squad specifically and obviously. Of course, of course he would have done this. Jay shook his fist in anger, and just as if it was some kind of a game, Frieza gave the order to attack and the battle started. Kill the traitors first, he smirked. Ah, there was the vitriol toward them, spoken in true Frieza fashion. In this timeline, thanks to the tactical intel from Ginyu that he had relayed to Frieza, the army was much more fierce and better prepared for this fight than in the original telling of this arc. And in turn, Frieza had upped the training regime for the troops, so the encounter was truly something to behold. I mean, yes, of course, the Z fighters were still stronger than them on average, but the sheer amount of soldiers being hurled at them was just so overwhelming. But then again, certain elements of the battle went a little better than before for them, as Shisami's efforts to beat Gohan and Piccolo down were being constantly thwarted by Rakum, who was able to hold him down in order for the Z fighters to ultimately succeed. Let's just say that Gohan isn't battered around as much here, probably for the best for his dignity. Jace is trying to find Ginyu amongst the crowd, but before he is able to confront his former Ketan, Tagama blocks his way, and the two began a pretty amazing duel, which is surprisingly even, mostly due to the ridiculous gains that Tagama had acquired whilst training with Frieza. Meanwhile, Bonyu, Berta and Goldo were trying to persuade some of the Frieza Force soldiers and members to leave that pesky organisation and fight for them instead, or just leave but to no avail. They were being paid rather handsomely. Frieza does see that his troops though are starting to slowly diminish in number, but is still entertained either way. He's just being a little bit impatient as all because the boss monkeys were not here to see the show. That's why he came here. Chase had to admit that Tarkin was a challenging opponent, so he decided that enough was enough and powers up to his ultimate cheese form. This naturally taking Tarkin more off guard. Ginyu, who's watching the whole ordeal going down from afar, tries not to look smug about this. As Frieza was witnessing Tagama getting his butt kicked by Jace, he looks to Ginyu. What do you think, Ginyu? Think we can replace Tagama with your old second in command? He is showing a lot of promise, I must say. Not bad for a traitor. No, my lord. I don't think we can. Frieza turned back to the fight. Shame. Good show, though. If Frieza had popcorn right now, he'd be gladly having some. After Tagama realised that even his body of steel technique wasn't enough to make him resistant to Jace's attacks, he realises that he's not actually getting any help from anybody, not from Lord Frieza or Captain Ginyu. He's being left to fend for himself. He decides to aim his bad, bad lancer at the other squad members for leverage, but Jace just simply captures the energy blade and throws it right back at its user. Tagama is so stunned by that, he gets impaled by his own blade. <coughs> oh, oh, that brings back bad memories, said Frieza with slight disgust. Ginyu, come and face me! Stop sending your lackeys to fight your battles for ya! He's calling you, you know. Aren't you going to answer him? Frieza pooped Ginyu, who decided to finally honour his old friend's request. And with a little bit of cajoling from Frieza, Ginyu addressed his former second. Impressive! You've grown real strong, Jace. Vegeta was right. We should have killed you when we had the chance. Maybe you were right, but I guess we'll never know. And as such, Ginyu charged at Jace, and they started to fight, attracting the attention of everyone from the squad. The two are digging it out for old time's sake. But even in his ultimate form, Jace was still surprised how powerful Ginyu had gotten himself. Neither of them wanted to back down. Meanwhile, all this blasting of ki and energy out into the universe meant that Goku and Vegeta did arrive on the scene. Frieza was overjoyed and starts his fight with Goku, which goes as it went in the original. 
with Frieza revealing his golden power. Goku, however, reveals his Super Saiyan Blue form to counter. Everyone is watching this main battle from afar, stunned. Even Jason Ginyu have called a halt to their proceedings. Wow, he really got stronger. Good old Master Goku. Ginyu looked up at his boss. Frieza has too, but he never really figured out the stamina issue. What did you say? And just as Ginyu said that, Goku did start to get the upper hand after being beat down for quite a while. Goku then explains that stamina flaw in Frieza's form, which greatly angers the Emperor. Why are you telling me this? Jace glared at Ginyu. Because there is no way I'm getting out of here alive, my boy. Ginyu smiled, spitting out some blood. No, there is. You can always turn on him, Ketten. It can be the Ginyu Force all over again. Like all this never happened. Why are you so stubborn? They kept watching Goku and Frieza's tussle. Jace, my boy, I am not a good person. I tried to be. I truly tried. But I am not very good at being good. This is all that I can do for you. No, don't say that. That's not true. You lot were the best thing that ever happened to me, Jace. The conversation was then interrupted by a stray shot. Sorbet had gunned Goku down. That little son of a... Chase muttered, but saw that Vegeta was taking on the fight for Master Goku whilst he was being tended to. Vegeta has got this. He will win. Can you sigh as he said this? This is stupid. I don't want to fight you lot anymore. But Chase was watching Vegeta and Frieza fight really closely. Neither do I. He turned to his old captain. But the captain then motioned for Jace to continue to fight him. What are you doing? Our lord is a sore loser, and he shared some ideas with me. And I think you should call yourselves the Jace Force from now on. Jace then got surprised by Ginyu with a sucker punch, knocking him out. A long enough surprise tactic for Ginyu to fly away from his former student. When Frieza was beaten out of his golden form, he attempted one last act of malice and tried to blow up the planet. That is... He would have done that, had Ginyu not grabbed his wrists. What? Ginyu? What are you- This is how I choose to go! Vegeta, make it quick! I know you've been longing to do this, so do it! Vegeta nodded in acknowledgement, almost as mark of respect, and he then blasted the shocked Freezer away with Ginyu, despite the squad's protests. As the former captain and the evil emperor were evaporated, all the remaining Freezer Force soldiers just collapsed. A deathly silence came across the battleground, with the squad trying to come to terms with what had just happened. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. If you like the story and wish to find something similar, check out this story here where Frieza himself turned good and turned over a new leaf. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!